I'm looking at Psalm 34. Look at verse 8 first. It says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So taste and see that the Lord is good. And then it says in verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. So I want to title this, God is good at all times. So for that reason, here's some things you need to do. Praise Him at all times. Since God is good at all times, praise Him at all times. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So he says, I will bless the Lord. If you bless the Lord, then you're making him happy with your praise, with how you're living your life, with, with what you're doing, doing what you're supposed to be doing, doing what he says in his word. You say, I don't know what God wants me to do. Just get a Bible and read it and you'll figure it out. If you're blessing the Lord, you're making him happy with your praise and what you're doing in any situation. In any situation, you need to bless the Lord. When things are going good, bless the Lord. When things are going bad, praise the Lord. And that is what characters in the Bible, like Job, did. He did just that. You know, you, you start out reading Job in chapter 1, and you see he is blessing the Lord even when things are going good, going extremely good. Before the chapter's over, you see things do a complete 180. They begin to go extremely bad. What does he do? Well, in Job 121, Job said this after all these horrible things happened to him. He said, Naked came out of my, came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See? It says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. He blessed the Lord when things are going good. He blessed the Lord when things were going bad. Paul, he blessed the Lord no matter what. He gloried in his infirmities. He said, My strength is made perfect in weakness. Things were going bad, but he knew it was just making him better, and he just gave God glory during those times because he knew God was making him better. So David says in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And this is David here. Uh, at the beginning here, it says, A psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. So this is when that great story back there in 1 Samuel 21.10, we'll just go look at it real quick. 1 Samuel 21.10. It says, And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath, and the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David had laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So you see, David is afraid here, which is strange, because you, you saw him just fearless against Goliath, not many chapters before, but here he's afraid. That shows you it's the Lord that makes you not afraid. And so David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, you see this man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence, shall this fellow come into my house? So you see, David pretends to be crazy as a defense here. But that's what that's when David wrote this psalm, was around this time. And it, it notice, it says in Psalm 34, it says a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech. And... Abimelech, you see, is, is not the guy's name. His name is Achish. Abimelech is like a title. And Abimelech means my father is king. It's like a 
Philistine title for their kings. And you see the name Abimelech in Genesis. You see it in Judges. And it's kind of like Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh's not a name. It's a title. There's more than one Pharaoh. There's more than one Caesar. There's more than one Abimelech because it's a title and not a name. So a Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, which in this case, Achish, who drove him away and he departed. So Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So continual praise, continually praising him. Continually doing this will keep thy tongue from evil. Notice in Psalm 34, 13, it says, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. If you're continually praising the Lord, then you're going to keep your tongue from evil. Maybe you got a problem with your mouth. Well, you need to replace your gossip and your cussing and your slander and your rude things that you say with praising the Lord continually. You can't just expect to quit cussing and gossiping. You can't just expect to be able to quit sins of the mouth and not put something else in your mouth. Continually praise the Lord with your mouth. You know, in Ecclesiastes 5.2, it says, Let thy words be few. That's true unless you're praising God with your mouth. Then your words can be a lot. So continually praise the Lord. And maybe you have a hard time with that because it's not in your heart. Matthew 12.34, Jesus says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So get some praise in your heart and it'll begin to come out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And then you can continually praise the Lord at all times. Then it says in verse 2, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Boast in the Lord not on man or yourself. Meaning, brag on God. Don't brag on yourself. Don't brag on other people. Look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 17. He says, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You need to glory in God and not in men. You need to glory in God, not in yourself. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. It says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The humble enjoy. A humble man enjoys somebody getting up and bragging on the Lord. Like if I hear just anywhere somebody say something good about the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm so happy and I'm so glad that they said that about the Lord Jesus Christ. If I go somewhere and I see a billboard or a sign that says something good about the Lord Jesus Christ, it makes me excited it makes me happy if i if if i hear an athlete give praise to the lord jesus christ or anybody this should make you happy the humble shall hear thereof and be glad when you hear somebody brag on the lord you need to be glad about it now somebody that's full of themselves and somebody that wants the preeminence they're not going to be happy about it. You know, in Colossians 1.18, Paul said that in all things he might have the preeminence. But then you get in 3 John, and John talks about a guy named Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence. Now, if you're wanting the preeminence and somebody's bragging on God, you're going to be upset about it. You're not going to be glad. Isn't it strange how in churches all over you have pastors who get up and preach the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, claim to be exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet they want the preeminence. It's like they are uh, using the Lord and the, the Word to get a preeminent place when it should be all about the Lord and the Word and not them. But they're wanting to be the one that's getting the praise. They're wanting the preeminent place. So... You have severe heart trouble 
if you hear somebody praise the Lord and you're not glad about it. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And another thing, I get jealous when somebody else is getting the praise and not the Lord. I can really relate to what Elijah says in 1 Kings 19, 14, where he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. When I see that, when I'm in a certain situation where, I mean, we're, we're gathering together for the Lord, and the Lord's not the one getting the praise, and it's somebody else, I get very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Or, even like when you got uh, some teacher over here or preacher over here and they obviously don't care nothing about this God, they don't care nothing about the scriptures and they get all this attention, but then you got this Bible preacher over here that's always exalting the Lord, always exalting the scriptures, never changes the scriptures and the preacher who cares nothing about the word is the one that's getting all the um, attention and success I get jealous for the Bible preacher because he's the one that's exalting the scriptures yet nobody acknowledges him some of the greatest pastors teachers preachers are unknown they get no attention And it's just sad they, that some of the greatest ones, they get no attention. Some of the ones that can help you the most, you don't even know their name. And then you got these ones that's just, it's a big show that's put on. It's, it's all about being flashy. Almost no word of God being used. And that's the ones everybody knows about. I'm for the one that's, trying to magnify the word, magnify the Lord. And the humble thereof shall hear and be glad. When I hear somebody brag on the word of God and not try to change it and just exalting it, that just does something in me. It makes me so glad. When I hear somebody, it's like they hate the word of God, they, they down the King James Bible that makes me angry. It makes me jealous for the Word of God. When I go into a store and I see ESV, RSV, NLT, and then you can't even find a King James, I get jealous for the Lord God of hosts. But when I go in and I just I see King James Version everywhere, That makes me glad. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So my soul shall make her burst in, boast in the Lord. And notice it calls your soul a her. And that's significant because just like in Romans 7, your soul is compared to a, a woman whose husband dies and she's free to marry another for that reason. And see... When, when you got saved, your flesh died, your soul was free to marry the Lord Jesus Christ. So my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. So magnify the Lord. The, the Lord is the only reason that my soul is going to be on the Lord's side of eternity. So I need to magnify him. Magnify the Lord in his word. He magnifies his own word. In Psalm 138 too, he said, it talks about how he's magnified his word above all his name. Let yourself decrease so that he can increase. Just like John said in John 3.30. He said, I must, I must decrease so that he can increase. 
in John 3.30, he said, He must increase, but I must decrease. You know, magnify the Lord. Make yourself small so the Lord can be big. When you're preaching or teaching, whatever you're doing, quit telling so many stories about you and things that you've done and magnify the Lord. Get the stories from the scriptures. You got all the illustrations you need. Trust me, you've not used them all. And you magnify the word. You magnify the Lord. You magnify the Lord just by talking about him and his word. So magnify the Lord. Make him seem way bigger in the eyes of people than he is. And you can't even get them to understand how big he is. But you need to get him bigger in their eyes. Make sure that he is bigger in their eyes than he was when they got there. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. There's coming a day, Isaiah 2.11 talks about it, Isaiah 2.17 talks about it, where the Lord alone shall be exalted in the millennium. You need to praise him at all times. God is good at all times, so praise him at all times. All right, number two, pray at all times. In verse four, he says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Remember, it said that the, that David was afraid of Achish back there in 1 Samuel 21, 10. So many times David was afraid, he sought the Lord, the Lord heard him and he delivered him from all of his fears. What you're living in today is a time of fear. Everywhere you look, Somebody's trying to make you afraid. <clears throat> I don't have cable, but I know that many people turn on the news. What are they doing? Saying stuff, trying to make you afraid. A new virus coming up. A new earthquake. A new hurricane. A new war going on. Constantly trying to keep you afraid of something. People get on their Facebook. What do they see? More conspiracies. Now, a lot of conspiracies are true. A lot of them, uh, not so true. And it's just the devil trying to keep you in fear. They get on TikTok. They're on the conspiracy side of TikTok. And they just see constant fear-mongering. Scrolling through things that are causing fear 24 hours a day. They get on the phone with their family. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but the older generations now have, I guess they've got into the technology and they are believing everything that they see and that they read on there. They're thinking that, I mean, just the world's coming in to an end tonight. They don't know about the, the scriptures. They don't know about the tribulation exactly they don't know about the millennium um, um, but they think in the world's blowing up tonight because of some tiktoks that they watched and they're just constantly being bombarded with stuff that's making them afraid but david said i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears david sought the lord you know, in James 4, 8, it says, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. God desires your fellowship. He heard David. He delivered David. You see, when you look at the Lord, it lightens your load. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 11, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. All that stuff you're watching on TikTok, Facebook, the news, that's weighing down your load, making you afraid. You get on the phone, even with your, your parents now, and they're telling you all this stuff that's just making you afraid. But he says... Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. In, verse, in Psalm 34, 5, it says, They looked unto him and were lightened. He, he'll lighten your load. 
Seek the Lord. He'll hear you and deliver you from all your fears. You know, the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Peter says, be not afraid of their terror. You hear the, all this stuff about terrorists, terrorism. They want you to be afraid. You know, Matthew 10, 28. What does the Lord say in Matthew 10, 28? He says, and fear not them which kill the body, but after but I are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't fear man, fear God. You'll always turn out better. He says, fear not them which kill the body. There's a place that you can go in your mind when you're not, where you're not afraid of anything. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm at that place, but I believe that there's a place where you can go in your mind with the Lord, and you're not afraid of anything. I believe Paul was that way. Uh, he said, I'm a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. You know, Paul was caught up to the third heaven. He had already been stoned, you know, stoned to death, been caught up to the third heaven. He saw what was waiting him, waiting on him. He's kind of going, going around with the death wish in a way. Uh, suicidal in a good way, I guess you could say. And he had a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. And he was, wasn't afraid. And he said, God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All this stuff that's making you afraid, if it's making you afraid of men, if it's making you afraid to, to live your life, it's not of God. There is a certain fear that's good, but then there's a certain fear that's completely the opposite. That's completely bad. But you come to the Lord and he'll lighten your load. You look, they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Not ashamed. Lightened of their guilt. Maybe you're, you got a lot of guilt on you and you're ashamed of the things you've done. Come to the Lord Get saved if you're not. That way your sins are forgiven. They're gone. And then you, in your daily walk with God, when you mess up, what does 1 John 1, 9 say? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's not for salvation, but for fellowship. You, you, you got your sins gone eternally when you got saved. And then in your daily walk, to stay in fellowship, you confess your sins and you don't have to be ashamed. You can lighten your load of the guilt. He says in Psalm 34, 6, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. This poor man cried, David the king sees himself as a poor man. You need to see yourself as a poor man. Paul said, O wretched man that I am. Delivered me. Who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? See yourself as a poor man. In Luke 18, 13, that publican said, Have mercy on me, a sinner. Luke 5, 8, Peter says, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. You think about this prophetically. The poor man in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble. He's going to need deliverance from the Antichrist and his henchmen. The poor man who refuses to take the mark of the beast. He's not going to be able to buy or sell. He's going to need to be delivered from the Antichrist. And you look at Psalm 34, 15. It says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. He hears it. He sees it. He sees what's going on. He hears what you're saying. And he can deliver you from all your fears. He can lighten your load. He sees it. He hears it. It says the poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And you think about who the righteous are. Looking at it dispensationally. People in the Old Testament didn't have the 
righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. But me and you, we have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And you can come boldly to the Lord Jesus Christ at any given moment and be heard. That's such a great privilege that you have that we overlook many times. And this privilege was well known by the Apostle Paul. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, he said, Pray without ceasing. You have the opportunity to pray without ceasing. Talk to God at any time. You're always righteous in the eyes of God according to your standing. Now, your state, how you're living at every given moment, that's a different story. But when it comes to your standing, you're always right with God in the sight of God. He sees the righteousness of the, G of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. So the poor man, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him because his ears are open. His eyes are open. And saved him out of all his troubles. No matter what trouble you're going through in this life, it's a light affliction that's but for a moment. And no matter what, the trouble's going to be over. If you're saved, eventually you're going to be with the Lord. Death's going to come. The rapture's going to come. The Lord's going to can deliver you from that trouble in this present life as well. And you think back about all your troubles you've been delivered from. All the troubles that you thought was going to be forever. I think about troubles that I've had. I'm like, this is this is it. This is going to be the trouble that lasts me forever. And then I look back at that and it's over. And I was worried for no reason. Or maybe you get in a fight with somebody. Maybe you got in a fight with your spouse. And you're like, this is it. This is the fight that ends it all. And then it's like it never happened a few days later. And there you was worried sick about it. You see, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The things you worry about, the troubles you worry about, the fears you have, it's nothing compared to what God can do. Pray at all times. God is good at all times, so praise Him at all times. Pray at all times. And now place your trust in Him. Place your trust on Him at all times. It says in verse 7 of Psalm 34, 7, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. He encamps round about them that fear him. The angel of the Lord. Now, the angel of the Lord, according to Paul, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Acts. First, look at Acts 27. Acts chapter 27 and verse 23. Acts 27, 23. It says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Obviously, referring to God himself. The angel of the Lord is basically an appearance of the Lord. And you see that all the way through the Old Testament. Look at another one. Paul's telling you that who the angel of God is. Galatians 4.14 And my temptation which was in my flesh you despised not nor rejected but received me as an angel of God even as Christ Jesus. So the angel of the Lord is the Lord. When you see the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament most times it's a pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You can place your trust on him to deliver you. Paul talks about being delivered out of the mouth of the lion. You think about Daniel. He was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. The, the, Lord, the angel of the Lord shut the lion's mouth. He said, angel, to shut the lion's mouth. You think about Jonah. He was delivered out of the well. You see it over and over through the scriptures. God's people being delivered. So place your trust on him at all times. And he not only encamps around you, as the verse said, he took up residence in you when you got saved. Colossians 1.27 
Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The moment you got saved, the Lord Jesus Christ came to live in you. And he lives in me. And he lives in every safe person. That's one of the mysteries. How does God live in every safe person at the same time? He does. He took up residence in you. He not only camps around about you, he lives in you. So you can place your trust on him. You think about in 2 Kings 6.17... Let's just go there real quick. Second Kings 6, 17. It says, And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. You know, Elijah, you know what he said? He said in verse 16, he, it says, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You can put your trust on him. You got more on your side than the enemy has on their side. The angel of the Lord camps round about you. You got an innumerable company of angels on your side. Jesus is the angel of the Lord. He's on your side. Place your trust on him. Look at Psalm 34, the chapter we're studying, and look at 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Now, this is the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ, but you're in Christ, and in Christ you're righteous. So, you're going to have many afflictions because all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But take Comfort in the fact that the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Place your trust on him to get you out of it. The Lord had many afflictions. Isaiah 53. If you look at Isaiah 53 and verse 4. It says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Many afflictions for the Lord, but he was delivered out of them all. The Lord didn't leave his soul in hell, Acts 2.31. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He was delivered, and he delivers us. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians 1. And verse 10 says, Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. So you can place your trust on him that he's going to deliver you. And you look at Psalm 34, 20. It says, He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. That's a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at John 19, 36, when the Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross, down on the cross for our sins. It says, for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. He didn't get his bones broken when he was on the cross. You can trust the scriptures. You can trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You can trust every prophecy that is going to come to pass. Psalm 34, 8. It says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. How do you taste and see that the Lord is good? Well, you got to be confident enough to taste. You trust in him, you get a taste. You know, some people there, you tell them to try something that it's really good, and they're one of these picky eaters, and they won't try nothing. They wouldn't even taste it. They could spit it out if they didn't like it, but they wouldn't even taste it. Some people there are, are too afraid to trust in anything but their self and man. They won't trust the Lord. They won't, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You can place your trust on him. God is good at all times. You can place your trust on him at all times. All right, the next thing, pursue his peace at all times. You look at Psalm 34, 14, it says, Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace 
and pursue it. Pursue his peace at all times. You know Jesus Christ, then you know peace. But if there's no Jesus Christ, then there's no peace. There'll be no world peace until the Prince of Peace shows up. He's real peace. If you don't have him, you don't have real peace. You got temporary peace. You got temporary things that might help you for a little bit. But you look back there at Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. That's peace. Knowing that he's camped round about you. And notice he's camped around about the ones that fear him. Fearing God brings peace. Because if you fear God, it puts everything else in place. It puts everything else in line when you fear God. Fearing the Lord brings peace. Look at verse 9 now. It says, O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. If you fear the Lord, then you won't want for nothing. That means if you don't want for nothing, that means you, ain't, you don't have any lack. You're not lacking anything that God believes that you need. So if you fear the Lord, you're not lacking nothing. It says the young lions do lack. If it's the young lions, you get you think, well, who's the old lion? First Peter 5, 8 says the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking him who made of our. So the young lions are the devil's kids, children of the devil. They do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You're not going to lack any good thing. Any good thing that the Lord believes that you need, you're not going to lack it. You're going to have what you need if you fear God. It says, Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. So he wants you to know the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord's a good thing. He wants to teach you how to fear the Lord. What does he say? What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? See, if you fear the Lord... Then you love many days, and you want to see good. Because see, if you don't fear the Lord, you're going to do whatever your flesh wants to do. And what does Paul say? If you live for the flesh, you'll die. But if you fear the Lord, you're going to stay away from stuff that's leading you to an early grave, and you're going to love many days. You're going to see good. So fearing the Lord brings peace. Fearing the Lord makes you not lack for nothing, and you're more likely to love many days. And see good. Fearing the Lord keeps you straight. It keeps your mouth in check. It's the mouth that brings you the most trouble. Just like back there, verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you fear God and praising Him all the time, that's going to keep your mouth out of trouble. It's going to keep you out of trouble in your walk. So many things that I would have done had I not feared God. So much trouble I would have got into already had I not feared God. And those things that I would have got into would have just took away my peace. It would have took away my happiness. It would have took away my joy. It would have took away the life that I would have lived. You know, Solomon talks about why should you die before your time. You can cut your life short by not fearing God. It says in verse 13, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. See, fearing the Lord keeps your mouth in check. If you fear God, it would make you not say some of the things that you say to people, hurtful things. You got all these people that say, I just want to speak my mind, and they say horrible things to people. You got all these people that want to gossip and tell everybody all the sins that everybody's done, and that just brings a lot of drama in your life. No peace. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. You know, in James 3, 6, you know what it says about the tongue? In James 3, 6, it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. The tongue is a dangerous thing. Keep your tongue from evil. And thy lips from speaking guile. That's where the trouble starts, is with the mouth. First sin ever was, was somebody putting something in their mouth that they weren't supposed to. Eve. It says in verse 14 of chapter 34 of Psalm. In Psalm 34 it says, 
depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So you pursue peace by fearing the Lord. Fearing the Lord makes you depart from evil and want to do good because you fear God. Just like you, if you got a good dad, you love him, but at the same time you fear him. And by fearing him, it makes you want to depart from evil and do good and please him to keep peace. Pursue his peace at all times. God is good, so pursue his peace at all times. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. You see the similar verse in 1 Peter 3.11. You know, depart from evil, even the appearance. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Psalm 34.15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. You feel like you start fearing man? Cry out to God. He hears it. His eyes are open to what you're going through. It says the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Imagine that if you found out the face of the Lord was against you because you're doing evil. You're not fearing the Lord. God looks down and sees you fearing God and he's well pleased and he's for you. But it says about the wicked, he, he's going to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. You think about wicked sinners that's lived, maybe they were famous while they were here from 200 years ago. Nobody really knows about them. 100 years ago, nobody's really talking about them. And the only reason a lot of people are still talked about is because they made days for them or something made a day after them. But most people that were famous, they're not talked about every day. How often do you think about certain great men or famous men that lived in nineteen in the 1950s. Not much. And 20 years from now, they'll think about them even less. 20 years from now, they'll think about them even less than that. The Lord's going to cut off their, their remembrance of them from the earth. You think about when we get into eternity, the former's not going to be remembered nor come into mind. Say you, you did a lot down here, got famous down here for the wrong reasons. It was all in vain. It's not going to be remembered in eternity. It says in verse 17, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Pray at all times. Place your trust on Him at all times. The Lord hears it, and He'll deliver you out of all your troubles. Pursue His peace. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. You draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Come to God broken. God appreciates that. You're coming to God broken. You've hit rock bottom. And you're broken inside. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn to. But the Lord loves to hear from a broken heart. He loves to hear from a contrite spirit. Just like when you got saved, what happened? You came to God broken. The Lord is nigh to them. Of a broken heart. It says in verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him. Out of them all. He keepeth all the bones. He keepeth all his bones. Not a one of them is broken. You can bank on the scriptures. This prophecy came to pass. Just like the rest of it is going to come to pass. It says evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The wicked are going down. They're not pursuing peace. They're not placing their trust in the Lord. They're not fearing God. They're not praying at all times. They're not praising Him at all times. Evil shall slay the wicked. The evil that they do is putting them to an early grave. The Lord will bring evil adversaries against them to slay them. The Lord Himself is coming down to Kill the wicked in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. They'll be alone. They'll stand alone. There'll be no peace for them. You get in hell, there's no rest day nor night. You don't have any friends in hell. You don't have a mother in hell. You don't have a father in hell. They may go to hell with you, but they won't be your mother and father there. 
you'll be alone, empty, desolate, desolate feeling. It says in verse 22, The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Re the Lord redeemeth the soul. For me and you, when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you were born again, you were bought by a price. Acts 20, 28 talks about how we're purchased by God's blood. Revelation 1, 5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. None of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You can place your trust on him at all times. Pursue his peace at all times. Pray at all times. Praise him at all times. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. The wicked will, they'll be desolate. The ones that hate the righteous shall be desolate. And see, you think about who that righteous is there in verse 21. Well, who was it in 19? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, none of them is broken. That's the prophecy of the Lord Jesus. So the one they hate the righteous. Who's the one they hate? The Lord Jesus Christ. He's righteous. They hate him. They're going to end up desolate. They're going to end up alone. They're going to end up in flaming fire. But the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Have you put your trust in him? Was there a time when you came to the Lord as a guilty sinner, broken, with a broken heart, and said, I know I'm a sinner, I know I've sinned against God, but I want to be saved and I want to go to heaven. In Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, he gives you the gospel. He says how that Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood. He was buried. He rose again. All you got to do is come to God as a guilty sinner. You know Jesus died. You know he died for your sins. And you just tell the Lord right now that you want him to be your payment for sin and that you're going to trust on him and you're going to be redeemed. You're not going to have to worry about going to hell. And then you can praise him at all times. You can pray at all times. You can place your trust on him at all, on him at all times. And you can pursue his peace at all times. You think about peace. When you get saved, you get peace with God. After you're saved, you try your best to live right and you'll have the peace of God. So God is good at all times.